Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with the Red Couch medium creator, Tracy Escobar. She is an advanced certified psychic medium with Lisa Williams International School of Spiritual Development. She has completed several rigorous programs with third-party testing as to the accuracy of her connections. She has attended the world-renowned Arthur Finley College in England several times to develop her gifts. Tracy works with clients internationally from her home base in Dallas, Texas. We cover a lot of ground. Enjoy this interview. Hi, Tracy. It's Joe Domino. Hi, Joe. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing amazingly good. Thank you. Excellent. It seems to be the resounding thing I've been hearing. That's a good thing. So <laughs> thank you for taking a minute out today. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank so, you. Yeah, my pleasure. So before we begin, I'm curious, how did you survive covid you know, and now that we're coming out of that two-year period, how did it change you? How did it change the way that you live your life, conduct business, and, and carry on as a person? Oh, what a great question. It changed. You know what? There was so much good that came from COVID for me, and I know not everybody had that experience, but for me personally, um, I didn't realize how much I was living in trauma and trauma reactions and things. So COVID, when it made me slow down and be stuck, right? I went through a really bad suicidal period, so it was really interesting. So it forced me to realize I was doing a lot of trauma response work on my personal level from being busy, 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 busy. So after I worked through that, I'm telling you, my business took off on TikTok, and it was really surprising to me for the mediumship and psychic community how much we had to shift to online, which was very different for my business because I was used to doing everything in person. Because out there, people thought you couldn't do readings and things like that online, but COVID really made it all shift. So it took me from being local to being national. So now I have clients all over the United States, all over different countries. And so for me, it helped my business. And people were more open to getting readings online because that's all they could do. It opened more to doing classes on Zoom and having people attend because people, that's all they could do. So for me, it was a blessing for my business, to be honest with you. So let's kind of boil down what you do for a living to something that can be understood by everybody. I'm going to transport you now to the front of a group of third graders at career day at an elementary school. And one of the kids looks up and says, what do you do for a living and how are you qualified to do it? How would you answer them? Yeah, so if I'm in front of the third graders, I really can't say that I'm a psychic medium just because I would be infringing on people's books especially their parents' religious beliefs, uh-huh. right? Yeah. So I would have to tiptoe just a little bit. But what I would say is I am an entrepreneur. I do run my own business. I am a writer. I'm an author. I'm a podcast host. And so I would kind of leave it on that level instead of going into deep, deep, deep what I do about, like write or write about or what my podcast is about. But I am an entrepreneur with no degree, so I've been able to – scale my business and work for myself. I've been able to write a book and overcome a lot of things in life. So I would talk a lot about mindset and positivity and being able to overcome things that you've been through and you're able to see and do whatever you want to do. So that's kind of how I would address third graders just because of the sensitivity of what I do in religion. It's funny, just this weekend, I was in North Carolina at a hippie festival and we were actually, we had a vendor booth and we were actually asked to leave because the um, owner of the fairgrounds it was a Christian-run space, and we didn't align with their belief system. So that's still very prevalent out there for me. Wow. That's, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. So talk to me a little bit about how this, how this happened, how you became a medium. What was it early on in your life these, you know, that gave you this gift to, to yeah. do what you do? Today? Yeah, so it's a really interesting story. So. I am a trauma survivor. I've had some trauma through um, childhood. Well, probably one of the biggest traumas happened when I was 19 with the sudden and passing loss of my dad. Um, My dad tragically passed away at a very early age. I think he was barely in his mid-40s when he passed. And so from that moment on, there was this connection to, okay, now what? Like, what happens when they die? And if you're a young teenager, like 19, you know, there's this pull to know, well, is that it, right? I was faced with death at a very young age. And I'm like, okay, that's it. We just die? So I became super 
fascinated or I would say open to the thought of the afterlife, right? That during that time, I was having my own babies. I became a mother of three. I was married at the age of 20. So I did all of that. So I wasn't really able to explore anything. But when like John Edwards came on TV or Sylvia Brown was pretty popular back then, I would want to watch it. So I was definitely open to it. But I thought you had to be special. I thought it was a gift given from God and only given to certain people. And so that was kind of pushed to the side until my mid-40s when I found myself divorced. All my kids had left and gone to college. And so now I'm stuck with, well, who am I and what am I and what am I doing? And still going through trauma um, and running, numbing, and hiding probably at that time of my life and waking up thinking, is this all there is? I wake up every day, I go to work, I come home, and I go to bed. I feel like I was on this hamster wheel and I woke up one day saying there's got to just be more to life. And I felt this overwhelming sense of energy that I had never felt before. And so I started writing things on my walls, like affirmations, trying to say, okay, I'm, there's more to me than, than just this. And I think I even had one affirmation that came to me um, that said, um, you're more powerful than you believe you are. And you're meant to do greater things than you're doing today. And I really thought that through. And so I started meditating, I started journaling, and I went to go see a psychic, my first first couple ones, and I had some amazing experiences, and I'm like, wow, a medium can really help you heal. I was able to talk to my dad, you know, after being gone for so long, and so I really put some excitement, but the one thing she told me is that you could probably do this work too, and I was like, what are you talking about? Anybody can do this? And so along with my self-development journey and healing journey, I found a metaphysical store, and I started taking classes. Um, and that's just kind of where it started. And I started having these weird dreams and premonitions. So through meditation, I just think it started opening up things for me, and I would journal. And then I had my red couch story, if you want me to tell that piece. But that's kind of where it all started. That was like the seeds that got planted. You can do this. So classes, and then the red couch came. So, yeah, we the, the red couch is pretty central to everything. Yeah, I like that story. Yeah, so at the time – when I was going through this whole self-development and journaling and I was like trying to find everything I could just to heal. I was painting, everything I could. And then all of a sudden I was trying to make connections with my dad, right? Because I had never had a connection with him after he passed away. And for some odd reason, and I can't even explain why, but the magic of red popped into everything I saw. Like they was, like red would just jump out at me and it's never been a favorite color ever. But Red flowers would jump out me. Um, of course, the cardinal, right? The red bird, and they associate the red bird with people who have passed in spirit, and I started seeing the red birds a lot. Um, and I remember one time hiking in the woods. I was hiking, and the red flowers or the red trunks of the tree would just stand out to me, and I was starting to take pictures of everything. And I was hiking one day, and I stopped mid-track, and I was with a friend, and I just had this vision of this red couch in the woods, and I'm like, and I looked at this person and I said, how random would it be if we just saw a red couch out here? And this person knew all the things that I was going through and all the premonitions I was starting to have. And, you know, thinking I was just a little crazy, we just noted it, saying, yes, how weird that would be. And we went on with our day and no couch that day. But uh, a week later, my dryer broke and it was forcing me to go to a laundromat locally. And so we went to the laundromat, we're doing the laundry, I have everything in the dryer, we said, let's go for a walk, right behind the laundromat is a lake, we'll go walk down the lake and just waste some time. So as we're walking, and as we turn the corner of the building, right there, right in the pathway was an abandoned red couch, and we just looked at each other, and I'm like, yes, and I was like, that was my dad telling me I'm on the right path and to keep doing this, and so the red couch just became my symbol of validation from spirit that everything I'm doing right now is finally putting me on the path of where I was meant to be and finding my purpose. And so that's how the red couch became so essential to me. It was a catalyst to put me into this line of work and to do the things that I do. So who would you consider heroes or role models for you in your life? People that have fueled and inspired what you do. Yeah, all the people that have paved the way, right? All the people... And that goes back to England and things like that. But locally, you know, all the people who decided to get on TV when people were still thinking this was all bad because I think they paved the way for more understanding, especially in the Americas. So you have John Edwards, you have Sylvia Brown, you have Teresa Caputo. I just Some people would call them a sellout for going on TV, but I think they were able to 
bring this to a media where more people can become familiar with it and be it more accepted. So I think they've paved the way for some of us to be able to come out and do this kind of work in the public. So those are the people. But I'll go back to England. I've been blessed to visit England five times, and I visited the famous Arthur Finley College in England. It's a one of the spirituals with Arthur Finley from England. When he died, he left his house to the spiritualist church, and they created this whole school. So mediums from all over the world will fly in and spend a week at this college just to learn and grow from um, their tutors that are there. So I thank that school for being there and helping facilitate mediumship and helping teach ethics and teach us all what to do and the right way to do it. So those are my heroes as well. So so many people who paved the way for all of us, I would say. I'd like to thank them. If you could meet one person alive on the planet right now, who would it be? Who would you like to talk to? Wow, one person alive on the planet? So interesting. Oh, who would I like to meet? I know, that's a great question because there's so many wonderful people. You know, for me, because I'm a medium, probably Teresa Caputo, just because she's what they call the Long Island medium, just because I admire her work and I admire where she's taken her business as well and um, how she helps people. So I would love to bounce ideas off of that. Um, right now I'm really fascinated on near-death experiences, so I want to meet anybody who's had a near-death experience as well because I want to research them. But Teresa Caputo would be my number one person at the moment in the famous realm because of the work she's done for us. Yeah. You know, what I, the, the other night, my, my wife and stepdaughter and even my mother-in-law, they all really get into kind of the – the people that go out and find spirits and, yeah. you know, they didn't have the meters and all of that. And they all have a pretty, uh, they have a sense and they can feel things that I don't. And, and I've gotten privy to that, but they were watching these three younger guys that were in this house and it was haunted and things were happening and they were showing it happen. And there was all these signs that were coming in that were, were inescapable. And I'm curious, how plausible is that? We see so many of these people that are out there doing that right now. So my question is twofold. Are there really that many things that are uh, around us that we can't see? And how plausible is it that so many people can get that and buy a piece of technology that can read that? Is it all possible? I think it's all possible. I think okay. being, being human, we're really limited to what we can believe, right? It's hard to believe the unbelievable right? But so many things are possible. Do I believe, the harder question is, do I believe that spirits haunting things and walking this earth to do scary stuff? I've, you know, I've been doing this work for six years and I've never, ever, ever, ever once had a scary encounter or situation. But I can tell you I've done thousands of readings now and I can get on a Zoom call and spirit will be there, right? So I do believe they are around us. I do believe our loved ones are watching over us. And I do believe they can see us. A lot of times in a reading, spirit will tell me exactly what that person did that week in, on the earth so that they know that they're still very much around. So I believe in the unbelievable. And I'll never say, no, that's, that can never happen, right? Just because what I do, people don't believe in either. Until I had my very first experience, I probably wouldn't have believed it in either. But I know what I've experienced, and I've experienced so much magic that there's out there. So, yeah, I believe in the unbelievable, and that everything is possible. But that is TV as well, and I'll just leave that there as well, right? I don't know what part of that's made up for entertainment purposes. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's interesting. I mean, it was just a YouTube channel, but this is the thing that I, based on what you said, is these guys actually got to a point where the spirit basically said, we're, we're playing you right now because – we want to have people come in here and kind of examine it. It was almost like they were being playful, but it was like they wanted the companionship of people because it was like this murder-suicide mystery thing, and they were trying to come up with these theories, and they actually did come up with theories. And yeah. they basically came, basically the spirits came back and said, yeah, you're on to it, but we're also kind of doing this for theater, so to speak. So there was a part of, you know, I mean, there was like yeah. flashlights that were going on and off. So it wasn't like this A&E production. It was just these kids doing it. But okay. if they were really coming up with a row, it was pretty elaborate the way they did it. And I didn't get that sense. But anyway, I just, um, I've never ruled any of that out of, out of my life. I can yet. tell you my first experience, how, how wild it was. I went to England, right, when I first started. And it's just crazy how everything works out. I really believe that there's nothing... Nothing 
is a coincidence, right? And if you can take me back to that time, it was a single mom raising three teenagers, worked paycheck to paycheck. And all of a sudden, I got into some money um, from a, a loss of a, a loved one or whatever. And so for the first time, I found myself, I'm going to go to England because one of my best friends had just moved there as an expat. And I'm going to go take a vacation. I'm going to spend a whole month in England as I try to find myself. So I had bought my tickets. It was done. That was probably like in December. And in January, I found this metaphysical store, and I started taking these classes. And for some reason, I always knew mediumship would be it. If I'm going to get into this, I just want to talk to dead people. That's what I want to do because it helped me heal. And they said, well, have you ever heard of this school, that Arthur Family College I was telling you about? And I was like, no, never. Well, guess what? It was like an hour outside of where my friend lived. So here I already had a ticket. Spirit gave me the money. I was already going for a month. And I said, okay, I'm going to go to this college. And I just showed up at this school for a whole week with all these mediums, super intimidated, because I don't think I've ever had a mediumship experience. But here I am. This is what I'm going to do, right? Being pushed by spirit, being pushed by my dad, and everything falling into place. And here I am. I'm happy to be there. And I tell you, on the second day of the class, I was in a beginner class, and I was in a room of 17 people. And my tutor says, has anybody never connected to spirit before? And me not knowing, I don't know what that feels like, right? I raised my hand and I said, I don't think I have. And she brought me to the front of the class. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to get a free reading from her. And she said, okay, I want you to shut your eyes. And I said, okay, I'm shutting my eyes, super excited. And then she starts. She's like, okay, who? there's a spirit at the front door. I just want you to close your eyes and tell me who's there. And I got immediately panicked, immediately started sweating um, in front of all these people. And I just had to take a deep breath, and I just went with it. And I thought I was making it all up. And I said, there's a lady there. And she goes, okay, well, who is this lady to someone in here? I go, it's someone's mom. And then she's asking me these questions and prompting me. And she goes, well, how did she die? And my stomach was hurting and turning. So I just said, she died of some kind of issues with her stomach. She goes, well, what did this lady like to do? And I, you know, we went on for like five minutes. She's just asking questions and I'm answering. And then she goes, okay, I want you to open your eyes. And I want you to look at all these people in this room and tell me whose mother that was. It's like, holy crap. I'm like, okay. I'm like being put on the spot totally. And I looked at every single person. And I came back to this one lady and I locked eyes with her. And I said, I think this is your mom. And she looked at me with tears in her eyes. And she said, yes, that's my mom. And then my tutor said, give her one name that would mean something to her. And I said, Michael. And the lady started to tear up. And she said, yeah, that was my husband who died about a month ago. That was my first experience. And then I ran up to my wow. room and I wrote in my journal, I am a medium, I am a medium, I am a medium. And there it was. I was hooked. Because that was the wow. most amazing experience I've ever had. And I thought I was making it up. But that's just how subtle the impressions can be. And you think you're making it up. And I so there started my journey of self-confidence and trust and because I had to fight all those things. So it took me a long time to go professional because, you know, my trauma made me not confident. My trauma made me not trust, even spirit or myself. So that's why I think mediumship is a journey of talking to dead but doing your self-development too because you've got to be healed to be able to do it. So that was my first experience. How cool is that? That's wonderful, yeah. So I'm curious. Everyone has a perception or an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, your clients, but ultimately you live your life. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, yeah. I'm still lay oh gosh, I'm still layering the lay the onion, peeling the onion. But I think I am a woman who's been through some things, who's found her purpose finally. So I am a medium. If someone says, Who are you? I said, I'm a medium, I'm a psychic medium and I love to help people heal. And that's what I love to do. And I love to spread awareness. I love to plant seeds. I am who I am, and I'm walking authentically me now. I am out of the closet, 100%, even though I'm still in corporate America, but I am a medium. That's who I am. So if anyone wants to learn you, your books, anything related to you, where's the best place on the web for them to go? So, yes, thank you for asking that. I do have a website. It's www.ofcoursetheredcouchmedium.com. I'm on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, everywhere um, under the Red Couch Medium. So they can find me almost anywhere if they want to go search for me. My book is on Amazon right now. Yay, it hit number one. So we're super excited. And it's called You Can Be a Medium and How a Red Couch Led Me to Mediumship and Turned My Pain into Purpose. Beautiful. Tracy, this has been wonderful. Thank you for opening up. I appreciate it. And good luck with everything. 
Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino. Where we cover the world of art, literature, spirituality, and music around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm-hmm.